audience, students and scholars, here I am Dr. Amjad Ali. In this video, we will uh, learn the social cause of inflation. Dear scholars, the causes and effects of inflation does not tell us much about social problems that result from inflation. So in this video, we will try to highlight some of the problems that are arises because of inflation. The layman's view and the classical response. If you ask the average person why inflation is a social problem, he probably answered that inflation makes him poorer. Each year my boss gave me a raise, but prices go up and that takes some of my raise away from me. The implicit assumption in this statement is that if there were no inflation, he would get a same rise and be able to buy more goods and services. This complaint about inflation is commonly false as we know that the purchasing power of labor real wages depends on the marginal productivity of labor, not on how much money the government chooses to print. If the central bank reduces inflation by slowing the rate of money growth, workers will not see their real wages increasing more rapidly. Instead, when inflation show, firm will increase the prices of their product less each year and as a result will give their workers smaller rises. According to the classical theory of money, a change in the overall price level is like a change in the unit of measurement. It is as if we switched from measuring distance distances in feet to measuring them in inches. Numbers get larger, but nothing really changed. Imagine that tomorrow morning you wake up and find that some, uh, for some reason, all dollars figure, figures in the economy has been multiplied by 10. The prices of everything uh, you buy has increased tenfold and so have your wage and the value of your saving. So here main question arises, what difference would such a price increase make to your life? All numbers would have an extra zero at the end but nothing else would change. Your economic well-being depends on relative price, not the overall price level of the economy. Then why uh, the persistent increase in the price level considered a social problem? It turns out the cost of inflation are a, a subtle. In, indeed, economists disagree about the size of social costs to surprise uh, of many laymen, uh, some economists argue that costs of inflation are small, at least for the moderate rates of inflation that most countries have experienced in recent years. Okay, the cost of expected inflation. Consider first the cost of expected inflation. Suppose that every month the price level rise uh, by rose by one percent. Uh, so here we have the main question that what would be the social cost of such a steady and, and predictable 12% annual inflation rate. First, uh, one cost is the distortion of the inflation tax on the amount of money people hold. Higher inflation rate leads to a higher nominal interest rate which in turn leads to a lower real money balances. If people are to hold lower money balances, on average, they must make more frequent trip to the uh, banks to withdraw money. Okay, for example, they might uh, withdraw $50 twice a week rather than $100 once a week. The inconvenience of reducing uh, money holding uh, uh, is normally considered a shareholder cost of inflation because walking to the bank more often causes one's shoes to wear out far more quickly. The second cause of inflation arises because uh, high inflation induced form to change their uh, posted price of more often changing price is sometimes costly. For example, it may require printing the distributing a new catalog. These costs are called, uh, called menu costs because higher the rate of inflation the more often restaurants have to print new menus. 
Okay, while talking about the cost of expected inflation, the third cost of inflation arises because funds facing many cost change prices infrequently. Therefore, the higher rate of inflation, the greater the variability in the relative price. For example, suppose a firm issue a new catalog every January. If there is no inflation, then the Firm price relative to the overall price level are constant over the year. Yet, if uh, inflation is one person per month, then from the beginning to the end of the year, the firm relative price fall by 12 percent. Sale from this catalog will tend to be lower uh, early in the year and the higher uh, uh, later in the year. Hence, when inflation induces variability in relative price and it leads to a microeconomic in inefficiencies in the allocation of resources. And the fourth cost of inflation result from the tax loss. Many provisions of the tax code do not take into account the effects of inflation. Inflation can alter individual tax liability often in ways that lawmakers did not intend. One example of the failure of the tax code to deal with inflation is the tax treatment of capital gains. Suppose you buy some stock today and sell it uh, years from now at uh, the same real price. It would seem reasonable for the government not to leave a tax because uh, you have earned no real income from this investment. Indeed, if there is no inflation, a zero tax uh, liability would be the outcome. But suppose that the ra uh, rate of inflation is 12 percent and you initially paid hundred dollar per share for this stock for the real price to be the same a uh, year later you must sell the stock for 112 per share dollar in this case the tax code would ignore the effects of inflation says that you have earned uh, only 12 uh, dollar per share in income and the government tax uh, you uh, you on this capital gain and the problem is that the tax code measures income as the nominal rather than the real capital gains in this example and many other inflation distorts how taxes are relieved fifth the fifth cause of inflation is the inconvenience of living in a world with a changing price level. Money is the uh, sorry, money is the yardstick with which we measure economic transaction. Uh, when there is inflation, that yardstick is changing in length. Uh, suppose that Congress passes a uh, law uh, specifying that a uh, yard width would equal to 30 inches in 2010 and 35 inches in 2011 and 34 inches in 2012 and so on. Although the law would result in no ambiguity, it would be highly inconvenient when someone measured a distance in yard, it would be necessary to specify whether the measurement was in 2010 yards or 2011 yards. To compare distance measured in different years, one would need to make an inflation correction. Similarly, a dollar uh, is less useful measure when its value is always changing. The changing value of the dollar requires that we correct for inflation when comparing dollar figures from different times. For example, a changing price level uh, complicates personal financial planning. Uh, one important decision that the uh, household face uh, is how much of their income is to consume today and how much to save for the retirement. A dollar saved today and invested at a fixed uh, nominal interest rate will yield a, a fixed dollar amount in the future. Yet the real value of that dollar amount uh, which will determine the retiree's living standard uh, depends on the future price level deciding uh, how much to say would be much simpler if a person could count on the price level in 30 years being similar to this level today. Okay, the cost of unexpected inflation while talking about the unexpected inflation has an effect 
uh, that is more harmful than any of the cost of the steady anticipated inflation it is arbitrarily it uh, redistributes the wealth among individuals you can see uh, how this work by examining long run loans uh, most loans agreements specify a nominal interest rate which is based on rate of inflation expected at the time of agreement if inflation turns out differently from what we what was expected the exposed uh, real return uh, that the debtor pays to creditor differ from what both parties anticipated okay on the one hand if inflation turns out to be higher than the expected the debtor wins and the creditor loses because debtor repays the loan with less valuable dollars on the other hand if inflation turns out to be a lower uh, than the expected the creditor wins and the debtor loses because repayment is worth more than the two parties anticipated consider for example a person taking a mortgage in 1960 at the time a 30 year mortgage has uh, an interest rate of 6% per year. This rate was based on a low rate of expected inflation. Inflation over the previous decade had uh, averaged only 2.5%. The creditor probably expected to receive a real return of about 3.5% and the debtor expected to pay this real return in fact over the life of the mortgage. The inflation rate averaged 5% so the the ex, uh, exposed real interest uh, real return was only one person this anticipated inflation uh, benefited the debtor at the expense of the creditor okay while talking about the, the cost of unexpected inflation uh, un uh, unanticipated inflation also hurt the individual on fixed pension. Uh, workers and the firms often agree on a fixed nominal pension when workers retire. Because the pension is different uh, earning, uh, the worker uh, is essentially uh, providing the firm a loan the worker provide labor services, uh, services to the firm while young but uh, do not get fully paid until old age okay like any creditor the worker is hurt when inflation is a higher than anticipated uh, uh, like any debtor uh, the firm is hurt when inflation is lower uh, than the anticipated Okay, the cost of unexpected inflation that these situations provide a clear agreement against variable inflation. The more variable uh, uh, the rate of interest, the greater the uncertainty that both debtor and creditor faces. Okay, because most people are risk averse, uh, so that's why uh, uh, they dislike uncertainty. Uh, the unpredictability caused by highly variable inflation hurts almost everyone so given uh, these effects of uncertain inflation it is puzzling that nominal contracts are so prevalent um, one might expect debts uh, and creditors to protect uh, themselves from the, this uncertainty by writing contracts in real term that is by indexing some measures of the price level in economic uh, um, in overall the economies with a high and variable inflation indexing is often widespread sometime uh, this indexation uh, take the form of writing contracts using a more stable uh, foreign currency in economies with the moderate inflation such as United States indexation is less common yet even in United States some long-term obligations are indexed for example social security benefits for elderly are adjusted annually in response to changes in the consumer price index uh, okay finally uh, in thinking about the cost of inflation it is important to note a wide 
widely documented but little understood fact of high inflation is variable inflation that is countries with a high average inflation also tend to have inflation rate that change greatly from year to year so the implication uh, is that if a country decide to pursue a high inflation monetary policy it will likely have to accept a high variable inflation as well uh, high variable inflation increases uncertainty for both creditor and debtor by subjecting them to arbitrary uh, potentially large redistribution of wealth okay one benefit of inflation so far as we have discussed the many costs of inflation the costs uh, these costs uh, lead many uh, economists to conclude that monetary policy makers should aim for zero inflation yet there is another side of the story some economists believe that a little bit of inflation say 2 to 3% uh, per year can be a good thing Okay, uh, the moderate inflation start with the observation that cuts in nominal wages are rare. Firms are, are reluctant to cut their uh, workers' nominal wages and workers are reluctant to accept such cuts. Okay, a uh, 2% wage cut is a zero inflation world is in real term the same as a 3% raise with 5% inflation but workers do not always see it uh, uh, that way uh, the 2% wage cut may seem like an insult uh, whereas 3% raise is uh, after all still a raise uh, empirical studies confirm that nominal wages rarely fall the finding suggest that uh, some inflation may make labor market uh, work better the supply and demand of for the different kinds of labor are always changing some sometime an increase in the supply or decrease in the demand leads to a fall in the equilibrium real wages for a group of workers if nominal wages cannot be cut then the only way to cut real wages to follow uh, or allow to inflation to do the job without uh, inflation the real wages would be is stuck above the equilibrium level resulting higher unemployment so for this reason uh, some economists argue that inflation grease the wheel of labor market only a little inflation is needed uh, an inflation rate of two percent lets real wages fall by two percent per year a uh, twenty percent decade without cuts in nominal wages so this is all about the social cost of inflation so see you with another video ciao